OK, so we all know that three points will uniquely define a triangle, as long as those three points have to be the vertices of a triangle. However, if we have three points and we don't say they have to be the vertices, we just say that those three points have to lie on our triangle. So let's say we've got these three points, and we say that these need to lie somewhere on our triangle. You can see that this isn't going to define a unique triangle, because we could make this triangle, or there's actually any number of possibilities for other triangles that we could make that use these three points. So in this sense, three points don't make a triangle because they don't define a unique triangle with this condition that they can lie somewhere on the edges. They just need to lie somewhere on our triangle. So how many points do make a triangle? Well, we need to think quite carefully about this because we could have any number of points. We could have rather a lot all in a straight line like this. And actually this still wouldn't define a unique triangle because yes, we need to have some sort of edge going through these, but the edge could extend further down, and also there's no restrictions on our remaining two edges. So we could have this triangle, or we could have this triangle, or we could draw in another triangle like this. And you can see there's infinite possibilities here. And in fact, even if we have infinitely many points, this still doesn't guarantee that we'll define a unique triangle, because we could have infinitely many points all contained within a line segment like this. Then we'd be in the same scenario as before. We could have this is our edge, but there's nothing stopping us from having any combinations for the remaining two edges. So in some sense, you could have infinitely many points and still not define a unique triangle. So perhaps we need to ask a slightly different question. So the question that we'll try to answer is, what is the minimum number of points you need to be able to define a unique triangle? So it's not that those points will define a unique triangle, but with that number it is possible to define a triangle uniquely. So after a bit of experimentation you'll start to see that if you have three points which lie on a straight line, three collinear points like this, then this forces you to have an edge which goes through these three points. So we can start to see that if we do this with another three and then let's put in another three points over here, this forces us then to have an edge which goes here, an edge which goes here, and an edge down here. So you can see that actually these nine points do define a unique triangle. But we can refine this a bit further. We can perhaps go lower than nine because here, while we've used three sets of three collinear points, there's no reason our sets don't overlap with each other. So we could actually do this with as few as six. We can form a triangle like this where there's no option other than to connect these three to form this side, connect these three to form this side, and connect these three to form our remaining side. So actually as few as six points seem to be able to define a unique triangle. Let's see if we can go any lower. What about five? So for five points, we could try a configuration, let's say like this, and this looks like it's going to force us, we'll have these two edges here, and then we'll have to have a third edge here. But there's actually nothing as stopping us here from extending this edge out a bit, and we could just move the third edge. And you start to see actually with this configuration, there's any number of possible triangles where these five points would lie on our triangle. There are other possible configurations though, so we could arrange our points like this, and then we could see what happens if we try and make a triangle that contains all five of these points. And once again, you'll actually see that there's other possibilities. So that's one triangle in black, but we could also have this red triangle could also potentially work. So we've got multiple possible triangles that we could draw. So this doesn't constitute a proof to say that we can't do this with five. There's lots of other different combinations to explore. So this is what we'll have a look at next. So now we're going to attempt to prove that it's impossible to define a unique triangle using only five points. And the key idea behind how we'll do this is to consider lots of different configurations of how the points could be arranged and show that for each configuration there's always going to be a different triangle which also contains those five points. And it's actually effectively going to be a proof by contradiction, so we'll assume that there is a unique triangle which contains our five points, but then for each of these different cases splitting up based on how these points lie on our triangle, we'll show that for each specific case there will always be another triangle that we could also draw so it wouldn't define a unique triangle. So how are we going to split up into different cases? We'll start by splitting up into cases according to how many of these points 
lie on vertices of our supposedly unique triangle. So if we start off with the case where we've got three points which are on vertices of this unique triangle, then there are only really two meaningfully different cases. So let's imagine our triangle looks like this, with three of the points and its vertices. You could either have your two remaining points lie on the same edge, or they lie on different edges. So case one could be like this, and we don't really care which edge they lie on because we could rotate this picture or we could reflect the picture and nothing would really change there without any loss of generality. So we've only really got two meaningfully different scenarios here where three of our points lie on the vertices. And we can see, just like we've seen before, there's nothing stopping us from extending this edge down and moving this other edge so that it all meets up and still forms a triangle. And similarly here, we can do the same trick to get another triangle. And this is all actually independent of how the triangle is drawn, because all we care about is we've got here four of them which lie in a straight line. But we could have quite a different looking triangle. Let's say this other point is perhaps all the way over here. And this is what our supposedly unique triangle looks like. All we care about is, in any scenario, however the triangle is drawn, we can still extend this edge a little bit, and there's nothing stopping us from moving this edge across just so that it all meets up and forms a new triangle. And you'll notice here as well, while we started with three points which were on the vertices, we've ended up with three of the points aren't on the vertices. But that doesn't actually matter. All we care about here is we've managed to find a new triangle which contains those five points, so they don't have to still be on the vertices after forming the new triangle. So we can conclude then, if we're restricting to the case where three of the points have to be on the vertices, five points aren't enough to define a unique triangle. So now we need to look at this where we've got two of them as vertices, one as vertices, or zero of them lying on the vertices of our supposedly unique triangle. Now if we've got two of our points lie on vertices of this triangle, then there are actually quite a few different configurations that we can consider. So I've split these up and introduced some numbering notation just to help us keep track of what's going on. But essentially, we've got one scenario where our three remaining points all lie on this line where we've got the other two points. Or we could have two of them lie on this line where we've got the other two points and the other remaining point goes on one of the other lines or perhaps at the vertex down there. And then we could have one of these points lies on our line between the two points on the vertices and the other two go on the same edge or the other two could be shared out between the different edges so there's actually one extra one on each of our three edges. And finally here we could have all three of our remaining points could go on one of the edges that doesn't have both of the vertices, or we could have two and one spread out like this. So this covers all of the different cases as far as we're concerned, so we don't care about having these two swapped with this one because that is effectively still the same triangle, perhaps just a reflection of it. And for each of these different cases now, we need to just see that there's always going to be a way of constructing a different triangle which passes through all five of the points. So we can use the same sort of tricks as before. We could just extend this edge and we could change the edge at the bottom a little bit. And you can see there's going to be actually infinitely many possibilities just using this specific type of change to our triangle. And we can do the same sort of thing for this triangle. There's nothing restricting this edge and this point here doesn't actually have to be a vertex as far as we're concerned. And we can use the same trick again for this configuration. We'll always be able to just extend this edge and move it down a bit so that we still get a triangle passing through those five points. Now things start to get interesting when we look at this case because we can't really use the same kind of trick there. We can't extend any of these edges without seeming to run into problems. But we could actually take, let's say, this edge at the bottom and let's actually shorten the edge slightly. So we'll always be able to shorten this edge slightly because the remaining point which is on the edge isn't at this vertex in the far corner. So we could shorten this edge slightly, make sure that it always passes through this point, and then we just extend this up and we can extend our vertex from this vertex. We can extend this edge containing the three points so that we can always get a new triangle. So we just shorten this edge here, extend this edge, and this edge effectively rotates to fit. So we still contain all five points in that case. This case where we've got four of them all on the same line is actually much easier to deal with, it's much simpler, so we can use the same trick as before. 
And then for this one again, we can use this trick of perhaps trying to shorten one of our edges. Or we can see that where we've got these three, this edge could extend, and there's nothing restricting this edge other than the fact that it has this vertex here. So we could actually use quite a simple maneuver here to generate a new triangle. So now we can see that when we've got two of our points which lie on this supposedly unique triangle, whatever configuration the points are in, it's always going to be possible to draw a new triangle containing those five points. Now if only one of our points lies on a vertex of this supposedly unique triangle, then we actually get quite a lot of cases for where we can put the remaining four points. We could have all four of them could lie on the same line, and it's one of the lines connected to our vertex. Or you could have three of them on one of the lines connected to the vertex and one on the other line connected to the vertex. Or you could have three connected to this vertex and one on the line which doesn't connect with that vertex. Then we could also split into some cases where you've only got two on this edge connected to that vertex and you've got your other two on the other edge connected to the vertex. Or you could have two and then one and one. Or you could have two and the remaining two on the edge which doesn't touch our vertex. Then finally, when we move on to only having one point on this edge connected to our vertex, it seems like maybe there are some missing here, like 1, 3, 0. But actually, because we've covered 3, 1, 0, this is effectively the same scenario here. So if you had 1 and 3 on this edge here, that's not really any different from having 3 on this edge and 1 on this edge. It would just be a mirror image. So there we only need to consider 1, 1, and 2, so where there's 1 on each of the edges which touch our vertex, and two on the remaining edge. Or you could have one, then none on that other edge which touches our vertex, and three on the edge which doesn't touch our vertex. And finally, there could also be zero vertices on either of the edges which touch our vertex, and the remaining four all go on the edge which doesn't touch our vertex. So for each of these different configurations, we need to once again show that there is a different triangle that we could draw which would contain these five points. So you can start to see there's actually quite a lot of repetition in our structure which suggests maybe there's other ways we could have split up into different configurations that could maybe reduce the number of cases. But if we continue like this, at least each step is very easy. We can draw in a new triangle like this, or here we could draw in a new triangle just like this in every scenario. And similarly here, we could extend this edge and draw a slightly different edge for our base there. And then we can use the same sort of tricks for this triangle here. And then for this one, this looks a little bit more complicated, but we can apply our method from earlier of shortening one of the edges. We know that this vertex down here, this point isn't on the vertex, so there's always some amount we can shorten this side, even if it's only a little bit. Then we could extend a new edge which goes through this point here, and then just extend this edge containing the three points there. So we can still get a new triangle in this scenario. Then for this one, we can use our usual trick of just extending one of the sides and rotating the other one down to meet it. Then for this one, we can use our shortening technique. So we could shorten actually this side here, make sure we still go through this vertex, and then just extend the one on the left down so that we still get a triangle passing through all five of our points. And this works once again because this point isn't on the vertex, it's slightly further along the edge. Then moving on to this one here, we can finish off our final two cases with the same sort of trick that we just extend one of the vertices and then rotate our edge round. So in all of these different configurations and cases, or in rotated or reflected versions of these, where we've got one of our points is on a vertex of this supposedly unique triangle, we can see here then that there's always going to be a different triangle which would contradict our assumption. So now we just need to look at the case where zero of our points lie on vertices of this supposedly unique triangle. And here there's only actually a few cases to consider. So this reflects the fact that none of our vertices are actually significant anymore. There's no vertex with a point on it. So here we can just group by we've got five of our points lie on an edge, or you could have four of them lie on the same edge and one goes on one of the others. And then similarly we've got three, two, three, one and one. And then finally you could have 2, 2 and 1. So these are the only different ways of arranging your points onto the edges so that none of them lie on vertices. So now we can use the same tricks as before. So here we could extend this side and rotate our base side. We could actually do the same for the first three combinations here. 
And for these remaining two configurations, well, we couldn't use this exact same trick. We could try shortening one of our edges and then we just extend this one and rotate this edge a little bit so that it still passes through that point. So that will give us a new triangle and we can use the same trick for this configuration here as well. So we have now covered all of the different possible configurations where we've got, we assumed that there was a triangle which was uniquely defined by five points, but we've covered all the different scenarios, all the different configurations where these five points, how they can be laid out on the triangle. And in each case, we can find a different triangle which passes through these five points. So we've proven then that the minimum number of points needed to uniquely define a triangle is six.